<laughs> and then they start doing this. Yeah, where's the stop, drop, and roll after that? <laughs> So, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, today, I'm gonna go tidy up a few things on the red car because I noticed a few things when we were at the shop on David's last video, and we saw like kind of where the oil leak was coming from, which is actually in a better position than where I thought it was, which just makes everything better. We'll get to that. So, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pressure wash the bottom side of the engine bay. Um, I'm fixing a few things with the piping because when we mounted it, uh, it was just getting a little squeaky because it was rubbing on certain parts. But beyond that, it's pretty much like tailored I would say it's very 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 clean huh um, I got back I just got back from Toyota of Concord to get that part that I needed which again I'll get to um, I have the whole entire garage now all my tools consolidated so I can at least get to um, buttoning things up and I'm gonna mount the turbo on the 1J today do the oil drain uh, get it off the stands do the remain seal got a couple cuts to vary in between here and there so I'll be balancing cuts and auto work throughout the day. So let's do it. That side piping was good. Nothing is like making a noise over there, rubbing. Oh, wait, check this out. Grill's mounted perfectly now because the intercooler sits low enough to where it's not bending this bumper up. So I know Rob's gonna be super happy about that because he painted that about 16 years ago and I never mounted it. So yeah, actually Rob's not really gonna like this. Uh, I know this is gonna suck to see Rob, I'm sorry, but you know how shitty my driveway is. So he just painted this. I think this has probably been on my car and driven a total of like six or seven times and the bottom side is just fucking murked and I, I i let the car go into a parking spot one time when i realized i was in a, a neutral so yeah i'm an idiot um we've got a little bit of oil drippage right and i noticed that when i was over at my girlfriend or, uh, our other house and it was hella wet under here when i was at david's fucking shop so i was like damn bro how is it leaking that bad like i don't have any visual oil leaks up top i was thinking it was lower pan and the the back side of this on the other it looked like it was really dripping bad from the top side of those bolts and i was like damn it's just leaking from those rtv is not working anymore it's just pressure built up over time it's probably what it is no that's not what it is the rtv is fucking solid it ain't leaking from there at all where david and Peru's found out it was leaking from which is i'm not going to be able to probably show this i might um uh, we'll see up on the oil filter is a housing bolt now the housing bolt is i locate it myself first yeah i don't fucking know where it's somewhere up there it's like where my feed my tur that bolt right there my turbo feed is coming from that right or the oil pressure sensor is coming from that so that bolt right there has this crush washer in it which i may have reused who the fuck knows or it's just loose i don't know but that is pissing oil down on everything and that's the uppermost section of where the oil would be coming from so i'm going to reseal the oil filter housing in the back side and that bolt um, when I do this oil change. And that should clear up all this nasty gunk that's under here and like how all these parts are fucking gross and how much oil is pissing down. Cause look at that. That's literally dripping like as we speak. It's about to spit off. So as far as the piping goes, let's see if we can see this. Oh Jesus, just threw my camera into the fucking hub. So the piping that comes down from the top side of the car, it, it ends up right here, right? I don't know if this is going to be too close. It is rubbing a little bit against the radiator uh, fan shroud. I would say, yeah, right there. So I'm going to put this, besides like, I could pull the piping off and then cut into the fan shroud even more. The thing is, it's not going to stop the contact against the fans then. It's just going to put pressure up against it. So I just use one of my old shitty silicone things. I'm, I snipped a bit. And I'm going to fit this up there, and it's going to snug against it to where it wouldn't rub. It's not going to move around. It won't make that really nasty, screechy noise as we're driving. So that should clear that piece up right there. Well, I mean, I think he's going after... He wants to blend everybody. Yeah. But his style is definitely more of the older school. You know, he's coming from reading all the magazines, yes. classifieds, working in the you know, 60s and 70s. And yeah, stuff. so you get a little bit more than I would. I didn't yeah. grow up with that. He's actually... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He basically says, here's the car. I'm not going to try and show 
showboat. I'm not going to try and give you all these crazy, like, I can respect that. weird ass sounds and stuff and plain shit. And there's a place for that. But I think he just kind of delivers the honest truth about the bare basics. Yeah. What would be sweet if he had a co host? That's, that's the one thing. You're right. Okay, so that, that's the one thing why I like a handful of the other car shows or even like the barbershop show that I watch. Or color YouTube videos. They have somebody else there right. that either is funny. Or, like, adds another element to it. Oh, dude, right. this is Eric, Mr. Auto Legend on Instagram. There you go. He, uh, what's your last name? Rothenhaus. I, I thought it was something like that. Sounds like a good old New York last name. Pretty much. <laughs> New York German last yep. name. So, he, uh, has been coming to me for the last three or four haircuts, and I've learned about him and his crazy car obsession, which is kind of where my trajectory is going to end up. I probably could say the same now. Um, this is one of his badass little track rippers, and it's an Exige. It's a 2006 Lotus Exige. Um, obviously, I like red. We know that because of this car. And yeah, the funniest thing about this though is like, as small as it is, I didn't think it weighed as le or as like, I didn't think it weighs what it does. I thought it was gonna be a little heavier, at least for like stability. But he told me it's like just under fucking 1,900 pounds. That's psychotic. I, and it's supercharged. Like Jesus Christ, man, that's fucking insane. What a badass little car. Yeah, this is one of, I think, 16 or 17 different things that he has in his crazy Frankenstein garage mind over there. Um, but, wow, I actually didn't realize I liked the rear end of this a lot more than... I changed it up a bit. What's the, what are the taillights and stuff then? Those are custom made. Those are 3D printed. That's why I don't... Okay. So we had 3D prints and custom designed those. Uh, they normally have, like, an LED taillight. Yep. Uh, this one actually looks like halo glow, but all the red... Notice, like it has like a little bit of lining in it, so the 3D print inside. Oh yes, yeah, that. Yeah. Step, so it actually helps. It kind of like sequentially glows. That's so dope. And then I raccoon the back, so that's all black vinyl. Looks like a, a little fucking, bit different, and then debadged it. it. Looks like a little rattlesnake back here. Like it's yeah. such a small car, but it's so wide. Like I don't know what the rear track is, but Jesus Christ. It's got, it's got big hips. <laughs> it yeah. Wait, what? It like I'm looking at, it, especially I like, consider the IS up there, but. Fuck, this thing's... Now, see, now I'm going to look up specs on these and see, like, the width compared to other cars. Because that's crazy. Oh, and just a big old single exit down the middle? Yep. It's a fucking rocket ship. What a cool car. Oh, and it's literally just vented out to the atmosphere. Yes, it. Oh, that's crazy. So trippy. And it's a Toyota motor. How fucking neat. Hey, they were smart about that, though, man. Reliability. 60,000 miles on a day of trouble. There it is. Fucking... And it's beat. So anybody that tells you you can't drive these in... And things uh, every day they're full shit uh it's a little bit more difficult to drive an exige because you can't see as well out of the back but it's like driving a van you get used to it but i'll tell you this thing has been in the snow tahoe snowboarding cross country la oregon everywhere Sixty thousand miles daily driver yeah he said he strapped up the fucking snowboard with just blankets up here and just like tied it down and then went that's fuck see like if i saw that guy in the parking lot i would wait outside the car the entire day skip my snowboard days to see who's fucking doing that and driving if you remember james bond yeah he took the um a lotus, lotus up there and went skiing with it oh yeah yeah, yeah yep so yep that's that, sort of my way that was the inspiration the modern <laughs> version of what dudes do with snowboards that's so tight that yeah, was so tight it was pretty pretty funny people laughed got dual hat rotors from sector 11 i like that so this thing stomps on a fucking dime and then triple r tires yeah. so it's super sticky grippy as shit five thousand miles and you're done done the best thing about his car is that he didn't uh, get beaten up on my driveway like everybody else does there was this c7 vet that came here probably a, a month ago and he came up on this side and like came in like usually everybody that's been here before knows not to do that and you can visually see that fucking that huge like uh, what is it what's the the moat basically around the castle that's like what it is the dried up moat and maybe you don't have visibility out of the c7 but he racked his whole entire front lip and blasted his front bumper and it just cracked and i was just like oh god like his haircut's so much more expensive now oh look at this thing and, oh and it's the targa too huh yeah so see that's fine and the whole oh, what you're seeing that's all aluminum that's actually the chassis of the car that yep oh it's really that like that's it see those factory guys that's all the carpet you get fucking wild why do they make these cars like like does lotus have other no, they have other things right well they made the they, they made the elise for a while they, the, that's they, what i was saying the elise version one that didn't come to the united states and okay this is the version two uh they've been making these since what i think 2005 was the first year they were brought into the united states what's the the country origin is it england it is england yep 
Fucking A. What, what, what am I thinking of is, uh, Volvo's Speeds. What else is... Oh, uh, Alfa Romeo. What is that? That's Italian? Mm, yeah, okay. So the Aerial Atom? Yes. Which is probably... This car and an Aerial Atom would dice it up real well. Okay. And Aerial Atom is also an English car. Fucking... See, we don't have... We're living in the wrong continent. Like, maybe for... Yeah, so that's for all those cars. The whole place in England, it's mostly foggy and wet all the time. Some of their best cars or convertibles or barely have any. <laughs> they can't even enjoy yeah. it out there. Yeah, it's like all the English people should move to like California, <laughs> and then they'd probably design some of the most amazing shit ever. That's pretty funny. I'm looking at the tack right now. I see no red. So does it red out to Ken Uh It goes up to this one goes up to nine. That's still pretty nuts. And it's a six speed. Eighteen hundred and seventy-five pounds. That's a nobody in it. Yeah. Fuck. Cool little cup holder over here it on this side too. Normally it's a little heavier. It's normally about. 2,000 pounds, but this thing, that stuff's ripped out. Okay. I'm a fan. He said for me to get into this, so this is going to be a hilarious thing. <laughs> All right. Ready to do this? Down dress, here we so go. So I'm not telling you how to get in and get out. I already, I already see my knees are going to hit everywhere. Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. I was trying to avoid that. I didn't even watch you get out. Yeah, a six foot with size 14 shoes. Are you kidding? This is how tight it is in here? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta see the width here. Oh, you do have... Oh, this is gonna be the worst part. There it is. Okay, so you have... I can lean over here a little bit. That's yep. pretty nice. But look at your headroom. Yeah. It's really not that bad. I. Well, this is pretty much as low as it's gonna sit, right? But the seat? Yeah. That's bolted. It doesn't move. So I'm not wearing a helmet in this car with the roof on. Uh, probably not. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, on the track would really fuck up your numbers. Yeah, exactly. You're, there goes all your drag. Dude, how trippy. I, I get it. Full on track car. But, like, I don't want to say luxurious track car. It's just like a fun looking track car. It's like. it's It kicks ass on the track. It does have some heat silk issues sometimes. Like, take somebody that cars? got bored of the Miata and, like, saved a bunch of money. Like, they're buying this. This right here. So, if I was to sell this thing right here with the way it's done, it's probably 40, 45,000. Oh yeah, so take But you can buy one of these, like in a lease, which is almost the same car. It's not as um, like a boy racer, I guess. I kind of like that vibe. Yeah. But you can get one of those in the t like high 20s, mid 20s. That's and like I bad. said, this car right here, in the condition it's in, driven all the time, 60,000 miles. Ridiculous. Dead on fucking poles reliable. You're right about the padding on the seats, though. It's basically like sitting on the sheet metal. It's one, inch, <laughs> it's one inch of foam. That's so funny. Pedaling is good, too. Wow. This, this isn't telescope at all, does it? Nope. Yeah, so this is literally it. This is the drivers. Damn. I didn't know they were... I literally didn't know this was this small in here. Like, I've been in some small... No, this is probably the smallest car I've been in. This is, uh... Because the Miata felt more claustrophobic than this does. I think uh, because the top is actually... And the width of the car, you're actually using all of it. Yeah. So it doesn't have any padding and door panels. Like, look at that door panel. Yeah. It's just a card. Yep. <laughs> it's got that little piece of leather... Yeah. It's almost it's almost comical. But even a little wheel. I know it's tiny. I love it though. It I could see this being such a fucking blast. Now, obviously like driving different cars that have a higher roof line has this visibility at, like cuz you have a handful of cars so, like jumping in and out. Does this ever like shock you again when you get back in it? No. Nope. <laughs> the fucking rear view. The mirror is pretty funny. <laughs> Oh, that's just to see if you're overheating at all. That's all it is. It's just like, oh, okay, I see my engine bay is all good. All right, I look on. for shadows when I drive this thing. <laughs> yeah. People sit on a three-quarter. Yep. So, like, if I see a shadow in that mirror, that means there's a car there. It's so fucking funny. That looks really wicked, though. Not bad. Um, your exhaust, is it? Is it a full... Oh, I don't even want to get out of this on camera, goddammit. Wait, 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 wait. Ready? Here we go. Is Figure it out. Is your full cat back or no? I'm not going to tell you. It was way easier getting in. I could already see it. I'm gonna hit my back. Hey, good thing I'm a little limber. Jesus, there it is. How was this shit get? It's exactly what happened with the Viper. Fuck. <laughs> That's ridiculous. This is ten years. Ten years? <laughs> oh god. Okay, so much fucking easier. You pulled in it like an astronaut was getting to a cockpit. That makes sense. Ready to get out? Oh, I should have went ass out. Why didn't I fucking know that? Yeah, I, I made it more difficult trying to swing a fucking extra arm. I'll show you how most people get in. Yeah. <laughs> you need to roll. Most people get in like this. Yeah, I yeah, I made the mistake of doing that a handful of times. Yeah. 
Or they get out like this. <laughs> and then they start doing this. All right, so he's going to get out of here, but hey, man, thanks for coming in for a haircut. Thank you. I'm not going to drive this thing, or see this thing drive away and listen to it, because it's, it's fucking scary looking. Fast? Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. I actually only brought one battery for my camera, so I don't know how much footage I'm going to get right now. I hope it doesn't die. Oh, yeah, that sounds good as shit. That's not bad at all. Look at how big my truck is compared to this thing. Jesus, that's nuts. So cool. Yeah, those taillights are crazy. You see those are custom made halos he 3D printed and designed. Fucking badass. Yeah, if you're gonna go out, go out that side. Thing is pretty. All right, man. I'll see ya. Super cool. Look how wide that rear track is, dude. That's ridiculous. Toyota, baby. <laughs>